What's up guys, it's Juan Cruz for Inner Eyes and this is part 2 of the video of what's reality and why you should care. In part 1 of this series, we learned that reality is made out of hollands, not atoms, molecules, subatomic particles or energy. Before a thing is a thing, a cell is a cell and a plant is a plant, it is first a holland. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, I would recommend looking at part 1 of the series. I'm gonna leave a link down below, so don't worry. In our endeavor to understand which are the guiding principles that make reality unfold the way it does, from matter to life to mind, the best way to proceed would be to uncover how each and every Holland behave. Not just atoms, cells or people, but every single Holland. Only then, a true theory of everything can emerge. The first characteristic that Hollands show is self-preservation. All Hollands, from atoms to cells to animals, display a tendency for self-preservation. They tend to preserve their current form across time. An oxygen molecule will do its best to keep being an oxygen molecule until there's no external force strong enough to counter that effort. In living beings, self-preservation is even more complicated. On a biological level, cells, plants and animals regulate their metabolism through a process called homeostasis. If it's hot outside, a mechanism, in this case, sweat, turns on the balance to change temperature. On a psychological level, humans are programmed to avoid change and keep themselves as they are. How many times have you seen the same friend trying to start a new diet and three days later you are having a pizza and a beer with him? Hollands, although constantly being at the effect of the environment, are also geared to preserve a stable structure against external forces. There is eternal play between the outside and the inside of the Holland, striving for equilibrium and preservation. This is the wholeness aspect of the Holland. The second characteristic is self-adaptation. We don't live in isolation. When we interact with other people in a cultural context, we must adapt to the rules to survive and be relatable. We do this by renunciating some of our individuality, but not all obviously. If not, everyone would behave in the same way. We conserve our individuality or agency, but at the same time we must adapt to a broader context for the whole to function smoothly. Same as cells or organisms. Cells, to give place to more complex organisms, need to renunciate some of its independence and consider that they exist in a broader context. They need to accommodate themselves to give space for a new Holland to arise. As a whole, it remains itself, but as a part, it must fit a broader context. Since Hollands are not just wholes, but also part of more complex wholes, they exhibit self adaptative behaviors. To give place for higher order Hollands to emerge, the one that precedes them need to adapt to the new context. This is the partners aspect of the Holland. Ken Wilber called his forces agency and communion. Agency being the tendency for independence and communion being the tendency to cooperate and bond. Since each Holland is built on the foundation of the previous ones, those need to modify their behavior and structure to enable the flourishment of the new ones. Electrons need to adapt their behavior to fit into the atom context and atoms need to change their behavior to fit into the molecule context, but not in totality. Atoms and electrons still maintain their relative agency and independence, but now considering the broader context. Now, the third characteristic, and I think it's the most important one, is self-transcendence. This means to go beyond what's already the case, to give rise to something that wasn't there in the past, to create something new. When two atoms of hydrogen and one of oxygen are brought together under special circumstances, they create something novel with properties that were non-existent in the particles themselves. There's a water molecule, there's the wetness. When molecules are arranged in a specific way under certain circumstances, matter begins to exhibit a particular behavior, survival and preservation. This is what we call life. A cell is fighting against external forces to keep surviving, while a rock doesn't. A piece of glass will not care if you burn it down, but an ant will. There are many efforts to try to reduce each and every future of reality to its components, but it's futile. Emergence and transcendence are at the core of reality's fabric, and no matter how well we understand atoms, there's no way we will infer life or mind from its properties. Each time a new Holland emerges, new futures are created. That is the reason why you can explain psychology with only biology, and you can explain biology with only physics, for example. Trying to reduce everything to numbers and formulas is naive and will have its inherent limitations. Know that even though something that didn't exist before appears, this new characteristic or property needs to respect the laws that govern the lower Hollands that constitutes it. A cell, despite being a living organism, is still subject to the laws of physics that determine how an atom behaves. 
On the same note, our psychology and mind cannot be reduced to its biological components, but still a big determining factor. A new hole emerges, but it's still limited by the lower ones. We might believe we can fly, but the rules of physics just don't allow that to happen. The last characteristic is self-dissolution. Holons display a tendency to break down along the same sequence they were built up. Cells will break into molecules and atoms in into subatomic particles, and humans into organs, but we probably don't want to see that happening. Holons exist in a constant balance between these four forces. On a vertical level, Holons find themselves in a constant battle between going beyond current limitations into a more complex way of being, and the tendency they have to dissolve into lower Holons. On an horizontal level, Holons are balancing being holes and being parts at the same time. Your reptilian brain is playing the difficult job to trying to adapt according to its nature or instinct, and at the same time adapt to a broader system, which is yourself. While people show instinct in some way or another, this type of behavior doesn't rule our lives and enable us to have relative autonomy over, over ourselves. A key concept to remember is what Wilbur calls, transcend and include. We've seen that higher Hollands transcend lower ones, cells transcend molecules and atoms transcend electrons. But it's not that the lower Hollands get eliminated or disappear, quite the opposite. They are included into the higher Hollands. A higher Holland transcends and includes its predecessors, adding new qualities while, while incorporating lower ones. This concept is critical when understanding ourselves and even society, for example. The Industrial Revolution transcends and includes the Agricultural Revolution. It adds novelty to the socio-economic structure, but it doesn't just completely negate its previous form of organization. Those were necessary for the Industrial Revolution to happen in the first place. Same with our psychology. We often get irritated by the selfishness of young children, but if we realize that they are actually developing their own autonomy, which is completely necessary for generosity to come on board, we will not get that frustrated or that angry. Generosity and the level of psychological development transcends and includes selfishness or the child's attempt to build their own agency. After going through the Holo model, we come to the conclusion that reality is hierarchical. When atoms get together, they don't form a human, but a molecule. Cells are not composed by humans, humans are composed by cells. And this is not aleatory, this is not random. This may be hard to swallow for some of us, but it's the truth nonetheless. The universe evolves determinately and has different levels. Atoms form molecules, molecules form cells, and cells form complex organisms, not the other way around. The question is, how do we know which holding go first and then last? There's a rule of thumb that's very easy to understand. If we destroy a particular holland, the ones above it should disappear, while the ones below it should stay intact. If we destroy all cells in the universe, any type of organism is going to be destroyed as well, but molecules will still be around. If we erase minds, nature and matter will go unnoticed, for example. This means that higher holands are more significant than lower ones. The universe took more time to build human beings up than viruses. I have nothing personal with viruses and I hope that they don't get offended, but we are more valuable in a way than rocks, cows, trees and your loved neighbor's fish. It may sound like there's nothing valuable about Hollands that are underneath us, but that would just be missing the point. Although we are more significant, lower Hollands are more fundamental than us. Without their existence, I would not be able to be writing this or speaking to this, and that demands respect. The higher the Holland, the more significant, but the less fundamental. The lower the Holland, the less significant, but the more fundamental. A hierarchical nest is built in which higher Hollands transcend and include previous ones, which are less significant but more fundamental. And at the top of that evolutionary scheme, we find ourselves, human beings. Thus, one of the most important questions we can be asking is, what does it mean for us? Since we are spearheading this fascinating process that's taken billions of years, what is evolution's direction? Each time a new Holland emerges, it brings with it new properties that weren't present in its predecessors. It is not a random mutation, but one that brings more complexity, more integration, more variety, and more autonomy. A cell possesses more autonomy than a rock, and a dog possesses more autonomy than a bacteria. In the same line, our brains are the most complex structures we find and have more than 100 trillion synapses. For now, we don't know anything more complex than that. Evolution has directionality, which is directed towards increasing complexity, autonomy, and consciousness. What does it mean for us then? It's not just that we are one of the only species capable of experience, but we have the incredible ability to understand, to think, to rationalize, and to discover what's going on. We can build mental models like this one to describe the universe, to create art, to uncover the laws of nature, to ponder and philosophize, to enjoy music, 
to experience the broken heart, to fall in love. As Alan Watts put it, we are the universe experience itself. And if the universe has a direction, the least we could do is to honor those efforts. We should try to be more conscious every day, to discover a little bit more about ourselves and the universe, to read, to play, to enjoy, to let the universe and reality experience itself through us. Because that's what we are, and that is the reason we are given such an autonomy. Consider, on the other hand, that these privileges come with a responsibility. Being at the top of the pyramid, being the most significant, the most conscious, the most complex Holland, means that we have the duty to take care of the lower ones. After all, the reason we are here is because of them. We should honor, respect and protect nature, animals and the like. They are the building blocks of our existence. We are here to contribute, not to destroy. We have the incomparable ability to be conscious of ourselves and we should own it. Thanks to it we can build businesses, music, arts, have relationships, build a culture, explore every corner of the universe, from Mars to the smallest particle. We can discuss morality, politics, economics, psychology and philosophy, all because we are conscious of ourselves. All because the universe is conscious of itself. But as the saying says, with great power come great responsibility. We need to start taking care of ourselves, our surroundings, of our society, animals, plants and the whole planet. We must protect what the universe took millions of years to build, because we are part of this whole endeavor. But for that to happen, a new kind of education must occur. One that builds upon this paradigm, which places a human being in the right place. The days of naive materialism and its derivative education is coming to an end. A whole new and exciting way of viewing the world and ourselves is rising, and with it an entirely diff different meaning for our lives and education. We are not randomly assembled atoms, we are commanding the universe intent to become more conscious of itself, to explore itself, to become more complex, more organized, more independent. We are here to understand what all of this is about and explore each and every component of what being alive is, of what being conscious of ourselves is. If you embark on this journey with inner eyes and its vision for education, self-actualization and the new human being, you will not be disappointed. Your life will be imbued by a meaning and purpose you knew you already had but never made it conscious. You're here for a reason, let's discover it together. Subscribe and see what happens. Okay guys, thank you for watching, please subscribe to this YouTube channel, thumbs up if you like it, share it with a friend, go to innerize.com, there you'll find more resources, subscribe to the newsletter. Thank you very much, peace.